Well, welcome everyone to Boggy Bottom Zoo. Hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. My name is Leaf, and yeah, we have our final tour today. Could you believe that? This zoo went by extremely quickly. I was not expecting to do this like at the fast rate that we did it, but easily enough, this was one of my favorite projects that I've ever done in Planet Zoo. It turned out so good. I love the tropical vibes. And yeah, that's essentially it. So we're just going to get started with a little tour. We're just going to use this as a little bit of an opportunity to go through, maybe clean some stuff up along the way. And then at the end of the video, you guys are free to hop in here on your own. You guys can check it out in the workshop description right down below or even just follow along with us. But I do want to say this area is easily one of my favorites in the zoo, even though it's not even in the zoo. I always love this area in particular just because of how open it feels. And it just feels so welcoming over here. Now, in case if you guys aren't aware, I did kind of base the entrance off of the Toledo Zoo. It's a very relatively, like, you know, medium-sized zoo located in, I believe, Ohio. Um, it's just a really nice modest entrance and it really did fit the vibe for what I really wanted to go for But moving on through here. We have a lot more stuff. So of course, this is our little gift shop area So we have a lot of different things in here, especially the plushies from keyboard keeper uh, They keep us nice and stocked up with all these wonderful plushies and a few other miscellaneous items on the side The gift shop really isn't that stacked, but it still turned out pretty good in the end um, I believe that these flower pots, once my game actually does decide to, you know, catch up a little bit more, uh, I believe these flower pots are also by Eben. So he did a wonderful job on that. And yeah, why is this freezing right here? All right, awesome, cool. Uh, so yeah, all the flower pots are by Eben. And I did this little thing over here. So in case if, like, you know, your whole family comes here, you guys can take a little picture right here. It's nothing too crazy, but I really want to do something kind of cute and small like that. And I love the mural effect back there. I thought that was kind of cool. And, of course, we have our first real animal. This is the Danube Crested Newt. I'm really not the biggest fan of exhibit animals, but this was kind of, like, the best place to put them. And look at them go. That's adorable. These guys look wicked awesome, and I'm so happy that Frontier is really starting to experiment a little bit more with these kind of weird animals. It really does make my day. But as you guys can tell, I actually do have guests in this build for once, uh, and they are able to navigate through the entire thing, which I think is going to be wicked fun. But moving on through here, and this is our first main plaza. This is essentially where, like, you know, all the guests would come to congregate. It's just a really nice way to kind of let you know which way you really want to go through. And we have this little alligator statue over here. I think it's more like a crocodile, but whatever, it's fine. It's Loki inspired. That's what we're going with. And I think we're going to start making our way right down here to the left. We'll save all that stuff for later. But making our way throughout here, and we have a lot of awesome things to check out already. I did take the last episode to put in some aviaries. So even though the guests don't really want to stop by and check them out, we do have some Bali Minas over here, and I believe we have... What is this, a kookaburra? No, these are the cockatoos. These are, of course, by Drac. He did such an amazing job on these. And it's just really awesome just to get, like, these smaller animals into the zoo, especially ones that don't really do much. Uh, it really does help to sell the vibes of it. And I have this set up over here. This is for the dingoes. So this is a vista that I was very proud of. I don't know. I really do like this, especially in the right light. If you just change it to that. It looks really good. But unfortunately, all the dingoes aren't out. I gotta see what's going on over there. But I really do love this view. With, like, the shed up there and, like, the walls. I don't know. I'm just a big fan of that. But unfortunately, we can't really see the animals over there. So we're just gonna start making our way over here to the platypus. And then we can check the dingoes on the way out. But, of course, this is the platypus habitat. This was the first one that we did. And it gives you a good enough glimpse into the platypus's life. Uh, of course, this is quite big for a platypus. Um, I gave them a little bit too much space, some would say. But uh, it looks like both of them are in their little burrow right here. Uh, not sure as to why I can't click it. But they are just chilling in there. So we can check these guys out. 
And yeah, they're just taking a little sleep. It's totally fine. I love the palm tree back there. <laughs> kind of like a happy little accident. But I'll tell you what, let's move one of them out here. And maybe we could see them kind of like swimming around if they get the chance. Or they could just absolutely disappear into the void, too. They can do that. Sure, why not? Uh, oh, there he goes. Check them out. All right. Awesome. Cool. Okay, this tour hasn't been a total flop so far. Uh, but yeah, I love the platypus. It's easily one of my favorites in the game. I don't know. It just looks absolutely adorable. And even though I'm not going to use them all too often... Uh, I think it's really great just to have these guys in the game. I think it's really awesome that we are, you know, able to do that. And, yeah, it's just really awesome to see that kind of representation get put in Planet Zoo. But, moving on from there, we have another viewing gallery to check out over there. So, we're just going to plop ourselves right here. And, of course, I am a silly goose and forgot to... I forgot to uninstall my mods. So, of course, we could check out our dingoes over here. And I'll tell you what, we're just going to look away for a quick second while we kind of send some away. Um, because, you know what, we're doing this completely modless, and I don't want any mods in here. So we're just going to, you know, send these bad boys to the Trade Center. And there we go. Alright, awesome. Here are our dingoes, guys. <laughs> uh, here they go, just having the time of their lives. And I don't know, I really did like this habitat. It feels so nice and open for them. And I never really used the dingoes before because, you know, they're just dogs, you know? But I felt like having this zoo be based in Australia was the perfect, perfect excuse to give them a nice little big ol' open plains, you know? But yeah, I really do like that. And of course, we have a little bit of a kind of like trench over here. So the dingoes really aren't able to make their way throughout here. So we have this nice open view out to the river out there. I think that looks pretty dang good at the end of it. But yeah, they seem to love their little habitat. I really do love, like, the faux rock work all along these cliff sides. I thought that was kind of cute. But we have a lot more stuff to make our way through. Especially with the bottom view of the platypus habitat. But I really did love building in between these areas. It really was one of my favorite things to do, because... Once you're actually in here, it helps you feel so immersed in this big eucalyptus forest that, I don't know, you could just taste it in the air. Like that, you know, that like fresh taste of eucalyptus? I don't know, I just, I, I like to imagine that's how it works. But here's the platypus house. I really, really am so proud of this one. Uh, unfortunately, the platypi don't really swim all that much over here. Uh, this would definitely be a place where they would swim because they are very active creatures. But unfortunately, they really aren't doing it right now, which is kind of sad. But still, I love this view. I love the glass up top. I thought that was kind of a cute little effect. And we also have a couple speakers going over here to give you a little bit more music. And we have some benches over there, just in case if you want to sit down and enjoy the platypi. But moving on from here, we have a lot more and more animals to cover. Uh, especially with a couple uh, lorikeets, I think, or parrots. I'm not really sure. I just thought they looked kind of pretty. And, of course, you guys could probably guess what we're moving into the territory of. This is the cassowary. Now, the cassowary is an animal that I have found myself more and more in love with. These guys are incredibly beautiful creatures. I was able to see them back in Zoo Miami. And, yeah, they were just really beautiful over there. But you can see that they're making their way through the water right there. Just kind of doing their own thing. Always awesome to see that. But I really do like their habitat as well. It's very simple. They have a nice big pond in there. And this viewing gallery was really, really fun to make. I don't know. I just had a blast kind of like figuring out how to cover this. And how to make it like nice and immersive for the guests. Meanwhile, still trying to retain a little bit more safety from, you know, the murder birds. As a lot of people like to call them. But I do love this view up here as well. The cassowaries wouldn't really be able to climb all this stuff. In fact, they probably shouldn't. But you get a nice unobstructed view into their habitat over here. And you can see them playing around with their stuff over there. Really awesome to see that. And I have been making use of like the vista points. Uh, you guys will probably see a lot of that in the speed build if it's already out. I'm pretty sure. I think it should be. Uh, I also have one of these birds here as well. I don't know what it is, but it looks pretty nice. Now we're moving a little bit more into our crocodile territory. 
I believe it's called Reptile Rendezvous. Uh, I still got to figure that out once I actually do, like, you know, submit it to the workshop and maybe even to the Lady Showcase again. Hopefully she can take that one, too. Uh, but moving on through here, we don't really see these guys, but these are the koalas. I was so excited to get these guys in here because they are some of my favorite animals in the entire world. And I also love this viewing gallery area. It feels so nice and so clean. But yeah, these are the koalas. And right now he's kind of just sitting there. Not really sure what he's doing, but yeah, his head is empty and his thoughts are nowhere to be seen. He's just chilling here, not doing any climbing. Because why would a koala climb? In a zoo game, you know? But still, I really do love these guys, and their habitat was so awesome to make. I have to give a huge shout out to Leader for the sales, which came out extremely beautiful, and I have to give a huge shout out to Caesar Creates for the beautiful dead trees. They look insanely good in here, and I'm just so proud of how well this habitat came out, especially this little viewing over here. I know, I really do love how, like, this all shapes up with like the background with boggy burgers and everything but we have a lot more stuff to check out we gotta keep it moving guys and i also did a i believe education sign over here i guess i didn't oh well uh no harm no foul who cares everyone need, no, already knows everything there is to know about koalas now this is where we get into some fun stuff, all right? This is the saltwater crocodile holding area. Of course, I really didn't want to give them, like, you know, too big of a habitat because we do have the crocosium back there. But let's kind of make our way over here because, you know what, we're the zoo directors, we get to do this. But check these beefy boys out. Oh my gosh. I love their habitat too. It's just very nice and very big and open for them. And it gives them enough room to, like, lounge on the land. And you could imply that they would just go inside for holding at night. But it really is insane just to see how much water that they have in here. I really am so happy with this. Because it's, like, it's not really, like, a habitat that hits you right in the face. But it's just a really nice one to be able to see. And they also have another alternative viewing over here. Which gives you a much better view at all of them. I think it gives, like, a very much better view. And, of course, those gates would be implied to open up and allow them to go inside the stadium for shows and for holding. Now, moving on through here. Hope you guys are hungry because we're about to stop at the best burger joint in town. This is Boggy Burgers. And I really wasn't, um... I guess I really wasn't planning on making this functional, unfortunately, but I don't really mind because I do like how clean it is. Now, of course, you guys may have seen our new series, Zoo Heist. Uh, over here, I got a lot of these blueprints from, and I do need to give a huge shout out to Zekin, Haribo, and Christina for providing all these lovely, lovely blueprints blueprints go check out that series if you haven't yet because it is amazing and i really do suggest you guys kind of play along with me in that but we do have a fully functional restaurant in here uh, unfortunately i haven't linked up the uh, actual tables to here so that is a little bit of a shame but you have two entrances over here you have this one which leads you to the pickup counter and you have this one which leads you to the actual dining restaurant so you have a little bit of an entry table right there uh i really do love the decorations in here it came out so bright i hate doing interiors by the way but this one was just wicked fun to do and i don't know i'm just very satisfied with it it just feels like such a nice cozy joint with like a nice greasy burger who who would who who wouldn't want to stop there you know uh, now, moving our way throughout here, we have the Crocosium, and this thing is insane to see. So, these guys are all going to this little viewing gallery right over here to see where the crocodiles can come in. So, that kind of links to the other side over there. Granted, it's all one habitat, so I kind of moved them right in here. But anyways, uh, I do have a lot of music playing over here, and you guys may recognize this familiar tune. I do have the... Zoo Tycoon 2 Endangered Species theme playing because I felt like that would be a really cheeky one. Actually, 
I'm thinking I may switch it to like that Steve Irwin song that plays at the uh, Crocosseum. Maybe. I'll consider it. But let me just get down the stairs over here really quickly. And then we can check out our friendly little gators. Not gators, but uh, crocodiles. And it looks like they're all the way over here. So we have all of this. But yeah, I really am so happy. I should probably talk about this build in particular. Uh, all this is custom. Granted, the guests can't really sit down in here. But I am still so super proud of how well this was able to come out. It just looks insane to begin with. And I really do love, like, you know, the massive scale of this. Because the Crocosseum at Australia Zoo is a very popular attraction. And I really did want to recreate it. Not really recreate it, but kind of give my own spin on it for this one. But yeah, that's our big old salty boy. Look at him go. I love him. What a nice little lad. And it does have a lot more decorations inside the habitat than the actual Crocosseum. I really did just want to have it feel a little bit more bright, have it feel like a little bit more, you know, more leaf, if that makes sense. And I think I kind of nailed it with that. I think it turned out pretty good in the end. Now, before we get to the rest of the Asia area... We still have a lot more reptile rendezvous to get through, and you can tell people are loving this section. So we're just going to make our way all the way down here first to check out what we have over here. So this is the Spectacled Cayman Habitat. I was so excited to build this one in particular. It was so fun! But either way, we have the Spectacled Caymans over here, and I wanted to give these guys easily one of the bigger habitats in here. And yeah, they love it. Check these guys out. I love the stripings on the tail. These guys are incredible little creatures. And I even gave the guests a little bit of a splash pad. So you have waterfalls that come through here. And the guests would kind of get a little wet. So we have the vents right here. That will take like all the water that comes in. It's just going to be a nice place to cool off. And the water also feeds back into the habitat over there. Which I think is pretty cool. But it does give them enough ample room both on land and water as well. And we also have the custom signage as well. Uh, but moving our way down here, we have a custom, like, you know, holding area. I love the little window right there. thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and moving down here, we have the underwater viewing, which I think is so nice and so clean. I know I keep on saying that, but it's so true. I really do love it in here. It feels so nice. I don't know, it just feels like a nice modern place where you could just take a seat over here and then just chill out and just watch the caimans, which are not in the water, it looks like. Alright, there they are. They're kind of like hanging at the edge of it. But yeah, I really do love this view, especially this one right here. I don't know, I really do love how well that shaped out. I don't know, it's just making these small little areas. It always does make me so happy. But moving our way throughout here, we have a couple more crocodilians to check out. So we do need to check these guys out in just a couple seconds. So we're going to fly our way right over here to the alligators. Alligators are easily one of my favorite reptilians, um, especially crocodilians. These guys are incredibly beautiful, and I had to give them a really, really nice habitat. They're very popular for some reason, which, you know what? Good on them. But yeah, check these guys out. Check them go. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm not sure if you guys have been hearing it all throughout the tour. But I do have the ambient speakers all throughout the place. So you guys are a little bit more immersed than usual. But yeah, that's really awesome just seeing them swim and make use of this habitat. I really do like the reptile rendezvous kind of theming. It just feels so clean. Uh, and I'm just very proud of how well I was able to like combined foliage and like this natural beauty alongside like nice big concrete slabs i don't know i really did like that we also have one more friend over here by the way love the palm trees like the africa what are these the african oil palms incredibly incredibly useful for like just centerpieces i don't know they just feel so nice for areas like this now moving on to our Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman Habitat. They get the short end of the stick, but you know what? It's totally fine because they are tiny creatures and they don't even need this much room. But these guys are incredibly cool, uh, especially when they move. Uh, not really sure why he's not really doing anything. But yeah, I am very happy with this habitat. It turned out so nice. I love their holding building too. It was entirely custom and it was a little bit of a pain to get that custom roof to look right. Oh. Oh, there he goes. Oh my gosh, look at them go. 
Oh, that's so cool. I love them. Such cool creatures. But yeah, that looks incredible right there, and I'm very happy with it. And of course, all the natural foliage and the planting and gardening that goes along with it was very fun to do. Now moving on through here, we have our Japanese section to make our way through. But before we can do that, we have to go through the little bit of like the Australian cultural walk. So I have a lot of this aboriginal kind of like carvings and paintings all throughout here. And it's just a really nice way to decorate like this long area that really didn't have any habitats planned for it. But I really do like it to begin with because it just feels like such a nice, relaxing walk. I know a lot of zoos down in Florida have been doing this recently. I know Miami and Naples both have their very long walkways with not much in it. But they really do focus on trees, which is why I have like the rainbow eucalyptus in here. And kind of like cultural elements and signage and art and stuff like that. So I really do like that. But we're going to save our proboscis monkeys for a few minutes and we're just gonna get started with our Japanese pop section now before you guys start to make note of the capybara in here this is our Japanese pop section it's not a Japanese section these are all animals that have been very popular within Japan uh, especially within J Japanese pop culture which is why we have a lot of like these kind of signs in here with like the dates um, and like the years that kind of go along with it when this animal became very popular. So of course we have the red crown crane at first. And these guys are incredibly beautiful. So I really did like making this uh, enrichment item. So this is that sprinkler thing. But I kind of reframed it to be a little bit more like a Shinto arch. I believe those are also known as Tori gates. Um, so we have that going on right there, and I just really wanted that as an excuse to get these guys to do their fancy little animations. But currently it looks like they're being fed. So at least we have that going on, and we get to see them all in one area. But yeah, the Japanese crown cranes are beautiful. And look at them, oh my gosh. And yeah, their habitat was really awesome. I really wanted to have like these nice mud bank walls going on throughout here and you will notice that the foliage is a little bit more different from the rest of it i really wanted to frame it after some of the prefectures in japan and i think i did a pretty good job at it using like a few more fir trees and like you know the monkey puzzle trees they give like this nice little era, era of essence i don't really know sometimes i just frame words together and i don't really know what i'm saying but it really does give this awesome vibe in it that feels so nice I also have this section over here where you could sit on the nice red bench and maybe take your picture over there. I thought that was kind of cute, but we have a lot more stuff to get through. And we also have their holding area over here. So of course it's staff only, but I really did want to make like a nice kind of like, um, what's it called? I forget what I kind of based it off of an onsen. So I really wanted to base it off of like a Japanese onsen building. So I kind of did that, and it looks pretty damn clean. I'm very happy with it. But moving on through here, we have our Japanese macaques, and this habitat was wicked fun to do. I have to give a huge shout out to Wyatt Andrews for the climbing frame. We'll see a little bit more of it in just a little bit, but this is a nice little view into the habitat. It just gives like a nice simple view of what's happening on this side, but what most people will flock to is the actual cave part itself. So we pop our way in here and we could see a lot more different vistas in here and we get to see a lot more um you know opportunities for seeing the animals especially them in their little hot springs so of course i had to get the japanese macaques in the japanese section and i was so nervous to build for them because i had this extravagant idea of doing like this mountain with like all of these hot springs all along it but I kind of ditched that for a little bit more of a cave kind of look because you know what I love making caves I don't really care but unfortunately the guests don't really use this as I would like for them to I would like for them to kind of pop up here and kind of check the stuff out while walking on the rocks but it's totally fine so you guys could check this out you see them all go and they have enough climbing frames to keep them satisfied they will more so chill in the water it seems like uh, and I also love these, so I made these. They're not functional, but I made these kind of like small little nesting boxes for them just to like chill out in, which I think is pretty damn cute. But yeah, check that out. I really do like the cave in here. It feels so nice, so natural. Uh, and I love the theming in here too. It's nothing really too crazy, but I love the wood beams in here just to help it feel a little bit more like 
yeah, this is an area for the people, you know? Uh, moving on through here, we have one last view into the macaque habitat. And this one's probably one of my favorites in here, just because you get to see the cave, but you also get to see, like, a bunch of different other stuff in here. And you got another sign right there that kind of gives you some information about the macaques and when they're popular. Uh, so, moving on right through here, we have the capybaras. So, the capybaras are, of course, extremely popular in Japan. And they're in, like, practically every single Japanese zoo, which I think works. Even some aquariums have them as well. But yeah, I gave them a lot of ample room throughout here just to be able to roam around because they kind of deserve it, you know? Uh, but making our way throughout here, we have a nice big underwater viewing. So I really wanted to base this off of like a nice natural spa for them. Uh, so unfortunately, they don't really swim all that much in here, uh, which is kind of a shame because they do have some really awesome swimming animations. But I still love this view nonetheless. It feels so nice and so open. And you have a nice little relaxing area right throughout here. I don't know. It's just really, really awesome to see. Oh, there they go across the bridge. <laughs> really nice to see that. But making our way throughout here, that is essentially it for the Japanese pop section. And yeah, it's just three habitats, but it feels so much more than that. Like, I don't know. It just feels like a nice relaxing area as opposed to like, you know, the kind of like hubbubaloo of the rest of the areas. So, of course, we have to check out our friends, the proboscis monkeys. This is kind of modeled after the National Zoo's O-line. I call it the P-stream, though, because it allows the proboscis monkeys, which start with P instead of O, like orangutan, to kind of transfer in between habitats. Um, I have it set up as one big habitat, so they're able to walk between all three of them. But yeah, we'll check out a little bit more of them as we get through it. Um, I forget who actually made these, but we'll get there when we get to the final proboscis monkey habitat. But yeah, I really do like this. It came out so nice. I love the purple in there too. And you can start to see them making use of like the little climbing frames. I have this one set up over here so they could get like a nice alternative view. But unfortunately, they don't really have any use of going over there. So that's kind of a shame that they don't. But we also have our Asian small clawed otters. These guys are adorable. And I had to give them like this nice expansive habitat. And this one has one of my favorite views in the zoo as well. Uh, you get this view and like right at the right light. Oh, you can see them kind of going across that line right there. But in the right light, you kind of get like this beautiful, beautiful vista of like that kind of like, like kind of glazed in the sunset or the sunrise. And it looks incredibly beautiful. And it just makes me so happy in the end. But yeah, this is our Asian small clawed otter habitat. And they also have another view down here. So I'm just going to switch the light back on. Oh, and they're all underwater, which makes me extremely happy. So we could pop down over here and check these guys out in their little swimming area. So this is pretty much based off of both of the river otter enclosures at National Zoo. Um, and yeah, it just turned out really good based off of that. It was just a really fun inspiration to work with. And while it's not a recreation per se, it really was awesome just to be able to like capture the essence of it. Just like the nice stream going through everything and like the little tiny outlets of water, like the ponds. I'm not sure if I kind of showed it off, but they have another pond over here. Uh, but yeah, it was just really awesome put together. And even though they really aren't moving around right now, they still seem to like the habitat. I also love the dead leaves at the bottom of the habitat. I thought that was kind of a cute little touch. But moving on throughout here, we can s they are crazy today. Oh my gosh, they're schmoovin'. But yeah, we do have the next proboscis monkey habitat. This is one where they chill out the most. And yeah, the proboscis monkey is like one of my all-time favorite animals. They're just absolutely adorable. And I had to bring these guys in here. I know it's not the most realistic, but I don't really care. These guys are really, really cool. And I really wanted to build them like this wonderful, wonderful little like multi-story habitat. And yeah, they're just incredible when they do that. But their final habitat's one of my favorites. This one is kind of based off of like, you know, a nice little temple theme. So we have a little bit of like stone work going on back there. And I do like their, um, like the outlines of these habitats because it feels nice and clean. They also have a little bit of hot wire going on throughout there. So they really aren't able to climb out that way. 
the only way they can climb in and out is through the actual like towers but moving on through here we have the nile lechway and african not african the water buffalo habitats i'm not really sure what this is over here um honestly nah we'll get to that when we get there i don't want to try and fix anything right now but yeah we do have our buffaloes and lechways in here i really just wanted to give them a nice hoof stock yard uh just because i really didn't want to make an entirely new african section for the lechways so they get lumped in with the water buffaloes and i think it looks pretty good uh i really love the rice terrace over here so i really did want to incorporate that a lot and this is based off of kind of like filipino traditional architecture so I have all of this going on right here, and it looks really, really nice. Uh, obviously, they're not real houses. They're more so like viewing canopies, but I really am satisfied with how well they came out, especially the thatch up top. That's all custom thatch. I took that as a little bit of a pointer from Leader. Uh, so we have all that happening right there. And yeah, I just love like all the sections in here that like help to make it feel a little bit more alive. And you also have boggy burgers in the back, which I think creates some nice little vistas. But making our way throughout here, we have the Babarusas. Again, thank you to Leader for the sales. These are our little Babarusa friends, and these guys are also some of my favorite animals. Uh, very simple habitat. It's nothing, nothing insane. I have this little bit of a river going through it as a way to keep them separated from the rest of the guests. And I don't know, I just really do like how well it came out. Babarusas are, of course, a very peculiar animal. They are, of course, members of, like, that whole pig family. And the males grow really, really insane-looking tusks, which I think give them a lot more character than any other peccary in the game. Which is just really awesome to have. Uh, making our way up to the rest of the viewing gallery. You get some other views as well. But one of my favorites is over here. If I just kind of schmoove my way over here. You can see a nice vista coming into play right here. With the proboscis monkey lines. And you also get a wonderful little view into the Babarusa habitat. They also have some mud wallows right there. So they could kind of make their way throughout there. And it looks wicked nice in the end. I'm very happy with it. And of course, our final proboscis monkey habitat. And I'm so happy that they're actually swimming. Oh my gosh. So I had this design because proboscis monkeys are some of the most aquatic primates that you will ever see. Or, or if you will never see because they're extremely rare. But G-Luck. G-Luck made all these beautiful climbing frames and I upgraded them. And kind of brought them all throughout the rest of the park. And it's just really awesome to have all that come into play. But yeah, this is the main habitat, and it looks pretty damn good. Uh, the keeper access is right over there. Just ignore that door. Whoops. Um, but yeah, the keeper access is right over there, and I'm very happy with this entire habitat as a whole. And I love my realism, guys, so I have like these nice little vents kind of like off the beaten path where the guests can't really see them. But yeah, I really do love having this big troop in here. It really is awesome just to give them that enough room to, like, you know, play around with and, like, enjoy. But we have one last view over here of the proboscis monkeys. And then that's pretty much it for Boggy Bottom Zoo. We have this one right here. And if I kind of, like, bring my attention cam to be framed up a little bit higher, we could see all of them right there. And we could start to see them making use of the line over there. But yeah, this is one of my favorite views in the entire park. Just because it gives you such a nice sense of scale. And it's just such an awesome view into the habitat. I don't know. I'm really happy with it. But guys, that brings us right back to the entrance. And we have now completed Boggy Bottom Zoo. It feels so surreal. And I can't believe we got through that in like 30 minutes. That's pretty whack. But I do want to thank you guys so much. This zoo has been incredible to really just capture and kind of build alongside you guys. And it really has been such a pleasure that you guys have enjoyed every single video that I put out for this. And it's just been an absolute honor to build for you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys pop in here and take some photos for yourselves. And just generally just enjoy this build. It was so fun. But all that being said, I think I'm going to sign off right here. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an absolute blast, really, just to build this zoo. And I think we're going to finish up some of our older projects. 
and maybe in the future we could even start up an entirely new zoo. I know, I should probably finish what I have first, but we'll end it right where we started. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are absolute treasures. Be sure to check it out on the workshop down below. Make sure to like it. Make sure to rate it or do whatever the workshop does. I don't really know. I'm not a workshop person. But thank you guys so much. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.